For our next speaker, she will help us with that. Uh, she's a longtime PPHQ member. She's a member of this team. Mm -hmm. And I, okay, oh, one other thing I have to tell you. I know we've been pushing for a couple of years now. And we. Free. Thank you, thank you down there. And so when we had our little team meetings in the past, and I would be on a Zoom meeting, I, this girl comes out with all these ideas. She was, I was like, oh, always like, like, she's your idea girl, she's the idea girl. And they're like out of the box ideas. She came up with painted prom. Let's hear it for painted prom. Woo! It wasn't for her, we, we didn't even have painted prom. So please welcome Dana Yates. Already, 
And so the miscarriage has kind of made that worse. And I questioned myself for a long time, and I questioned what I was supposed to be doing with my life. I tried many different things. I felt like I kept failing at everything that I was doing, and I kept questioning God, like, God, why can't you just make this work for me? You know, have y'all had that? Y'all are just like wondering, like, why isn't it working this time? Can you please just bring this together? So you want to know how you do this. How do you get to a point in your life where you are confident? Now, when I say this, I don't mean how do you feel like you're in control of your life because there's a difference. Let's face it, control is an illusion. It's one thing that we do not have, no matter how hard we try. But that's why our faith is so important. Because when we aren't in control, we have the faith to help us trust in God and his plan and his timing. And it's in him that we create our confidence. Confidence looks a lot like sucking it up and doing the things you don't want to do. <laughs> you feel good and proud of yourself afterwards. It has everything to do with consistent routine choices that you make for yourself. So y'all, I practiced building my confidence this summer. I knew I had to challenge myself because I couldn't allow myself to get up here on this stage and tell you all how to do something that I wasn't willing to do myself. I had to lead myself by example. <laughs> how many of you think that sounds fun? <laughs> yeah, it's not. <laughs> but it does work. Okay. The first thing I did, I started getting up earlier. Now, that is still a work in progress, but hey, progress is progress, right? <laughs> and I'm pretty pr dang proud of myself because I am not a morning person, like, like at all. <laughs> the second thing, I participated in some group coaching activities. I learned from others, I improved my mindset, I got encouragement from other like-minded people who are working to reach similar goals. Oh, this is number three. I'm so proud of myself, y'all. I started an online book study. I'm not good at reading. Y'all read? Y'all read? I don't read nearly as much as I should. And I knew the best way for me to actually read was to force myself to do it. <laughs> so I started the book study. And I had the, you know, daily group discussions and a weekly Zoom meeting to force myself to do it so that I could share and chat about it with my participants. Um, the other thing I did was I painted my new art room to inspire me. You have to surround, your, surround yourself with positive affirmations. Some people like to write affirmations on their bathroom mirror. Some put it on sticky notes and post them all over the house so that they regularly see them on a daily basis. Well, of course, me being my creative self, I had to get creative. I had to make my art studio pretty. I decided to take the lyrics of my favorite worship song so that I have a constant reminder that even when I'm feeling lost and like I can't make things happen, God is more than able. Anything is possible with him. Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? And finally, the last thing that I did was if there was something that I didn't want to do, I had to make myself be aware of that. And then I had to make an intentional decision about whether I was going to choose to do that thing or not. So it was a matter of learning self-awareness and discipline. I had to be able to say, I don't want to do this. And then turn around and be like, okay, Dana, well, go do it now. You have to do it. <laughs> Stop cutting yourself so much slack on your excuses. Do we not all do that? Why do we do that? Why do we, why do we cut ourselves so much slack? We're giving all the excuses and then we're just parting in it like it doesn't matter. How many of y'all like results? You like results, right? Like, 
you have a feeling of accomplishment and productivity, and that's all part of building your confidence. But how do you get there? It's actually super simple. It isn't easy, but it is simple. Confidence is built. It's created. When you do the things that you don't want to do, the things that you haven't been willing to do. How many times have you heard somebody say, who really, really inspires you, they tell you exactly what you need to do in order to get to a certain place? Then they tell you a list of things that they do. Like they're literally handing you the steps. And then after they finish naming off that list, you're like, crap, I'm sorry I asked. <laughs> and then you're just kind of shrugging off like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Why is that? The reason that we aren't seeing results is not because we can't do it. It's just because we don't want to do it. We aren't willing to do what it takes to get what we want. What is something that's been holding you back because you've been too scared to go do it? Are you thinking about it right now? Is that in your mind? Go do it. Because what is it going to take for you to do it? Is it because you actually can't do it? Or is it more like we're making excuses because it's out of our comfort zone and we really don't like it and it makes us want to throw up and I just refuse to do it? <laughs> if you really can't do it, then that's your next goal. You've got to go learn the skills that you need to make it happen. But if it's an excuse, then you're really just overthinking it and you've got to suck it up and do it scared. Because is it really worth missing out on making your dreams come true? Is it really worth robbing a bunch of people out there of you? What does that mean, Daniel? This isn't about you. You have a purpose. You are specifically designed to fulfill a purpose. God created you in this specific moment in time for a specific reason to reach specific people. If you're not stepping into your purpose because you're scared, then you're thinking about yourself way too much. This is not about you. This is about other people. Other people out there need you and are waiting for you to get yourself together and walk into your calling because they need to experience what you have to give in a way that you have to give it. Stop thinking about how you can't and start focusing on how you can and who you want to impact. The way to earn confidence is to be teachable and be willing to make changes. You have to be so tired of where you are that you're willing to do the things that you weren't willing to do before in order to get the results. As you grow, your confidence grows, and it all happens outside of your comfort zone. So you're probably out here thinking, well, that's great, it worked for you, but how does it work for me? I want you to think about your story for just a minute. What's your story? What are the painful things that you've had to go through that have become the biggest part of who you are? There were so many times where I felt like I was dealt a crappy hand, but you know what? That's how I got here. That's how I found Heidi, and that's how I found all of y'all. And if I hadn't gone through that last miscarriage, I probably wouldn't even be teaching paint parties and trying to help other women heal the only way that I know how to. You have to embrace your struggles. They make you stronger. They make you wiser. They make you compassionate and empathetic towards others. They give you a story of perseverance. And they give God a story of his power. This is how you bring others to him. Your story is important. It's unique and it's meant to be shared. Other people out there, just like you, are waiting for you 
to come share your story with them so that you can give them hope. Because at the end of the day, we all just need to know that we can be okay too and that we can get through this. We can persevere and come out on the other side. What are they going to do if you don't act in obedience? You've got to do the work and let God do the rest. We can't control what always happens in our life, but we can control how we respond to it. We can do the work, the tough stuff that's not always fun, and then we let God handle the rest. You have to give him something to bless, though. As you change through Christ, you will start to feel more confident, and you will earn your confidence through him. I want to leave you with this. It's my life verse. It's Hebrews 10, 36. It says, you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. If any of y'all out there want to know about Jesus, if you want to rededicate your life to him, come and see me. I will pray with you before we go home. And God bless you all. I love you. Thank you so much.